Hi, so we're starting off our new channel, I guess, and um, we're calling it it's, uh, Peaceful Rage. One of the reasons is because we are strong advocates in our life. Um, we have been strong advocates, and we can get a little loud sometimes. A lot of people say that we have great views, um, but sometimes we are intimidating, I guess, in our views. Um, our daughter, uh, we are medical parents. Our daughter, Anna, with an E, E-N-N-A. Give a thumbs up, Anna. Okay, so Anna has spinal muscular atrophy, type uh -huh. 1, which leaves her floppy tone. Uh -huh. So if I were to hold her hand up, it would be... Well, she's doing it now, but that's... Oh, wow, she's never done this before. This is actually... This is actually really cool. She's never done this before, so been able to hold her hand up before. Um, she is currently receiving treatment, so when she was born... Woo! See, there's a floppy tone. Wow. We've never had... That's actually weird we caught that on video because she's never done that before. So, anyway, um, she's never been able to hold... So, it's lack of muscle tone. Basically, the muscles aren't getting the signal to, you know, feed the protein to the muscle. So, the muscles just keep feeding the protein away and then her muscles just waste away. So, they weren't recepting somewhere in the brain for the signal. Um, her dad and I are both type... Uh, both carriers, so one out of 40 people have um, the chance of being a carrier to SMA. And when you meet your match, we get educated on SMA. So, and it is a type one. There's about, what, four or five different types of SMA yeah. going on to adolescence. So later on, you know, people will start realizing that they have um, adult onset, onset uh, SMA, I guess, sometimes. Um, us being carriers, no, we um, do not have SMA, but uh, unfortunately gets one gene from me, one gene from Hugo, and that's how it happened. We've been together, what, 15 years, and is 14, so Hugo and I... Yeah, it's the reason why we decided to, uh, to open that YouTube channel, is uh, yeah, so many things have happened in the past. And uh, plus it's going to be Anna's birthday is coming up uh, this year and it's also been well, 15 is Well, it's going to be next year. It's going to be the 15 year mark. And uh, it's going to be 15 years to I'm up here in Alberta. Uh, at the beginning for I sure. come up here, uh, I come up here for work uh, with the Rocky relationship in Quebec. And uh, yeah, I was not coming here with no intention to meet someone and I uh, get invited to a Christmas uh, birthday party for a friend of my co-worker and uh, yeah we met the we met the special person right there we both can feel the energy right of the beginning and we, we both know we both know it was a connection yeah, yeah. Like it was like like we knew each other forever and yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I never really like it. And he always has been, you know, when you show up, I have seen that with so many people. Uh, when you have a language barrier, most people, you know, they talk to you a little bit and they don't show any interest. And some people catch up right away on your accent. And, you know, you effort to try to, to talk and they try to make the effort to understand what you're saying. And Lisa was one of them. And it was... It was a very amazing, uh, the, be the beginning of the relationship was very amazing. You can feel the compassion on both sides. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, and what else do you have to say about it? So we, um, yeah, so we've, we've had a very long road with Anna. Um, I, Hugo and I were not sure about our relationship and stuff like that, so we were up and down, and I asked him to go see his kids for a little bit. He did go see his kids for, he has three kids in Quebec. I said for Christmas, you know, at least before Anna's born, go spend some time with just your three kids and really know what you want, first of all, and things like that. So it was really difficult for him to make that decision to say that he was going to leave three kids behind across Canada and move all the way, you know, here as we have a child coming on the way. Um, we met and then within that year we had been become pregnant with Anna and um, it was a lot to intake at first. So then, you know, he had things going on with his kids in Quebec that he had to sort out. It was really complicated. And then we, I told him I'd be okay here with Anna and, but the only thing is, is I never had any news from him because he didn't know how to tell me, you know, he wasn't coming back to Alberta for a while. So I had Anna alone 
I was alone for seven months. Oh, I know. And um, <laughs> I know. I was alone for seven months. It was a struggle because in the beginning, she was, you know, a beautiful, healthy baby girl. And then as time slowly, gradually went on, you know, within about three months, I started realizing, the first two months, I started realizing she wasn't holding her head up at all, and something wasn't right. She felt weak and floppy, and so tests went on, and um, I went to two different doctors, got opinions, finally was referred to the Stollery Hospital, where we were told about spinal muscular atrophy type 1. Oh, we is, have a little girl who won the yeah. CI. <laughs> we have a photo bomber here, um, Tora. So, yeah. anyways, um, so SMA type 1, um, there's like four or five different variations, even SMART, all that stuff kind of in relating to each other. Um, so, she's missing her SMN1, a couple of her SMN2 genes, I guess it is, and it's all based on how many SMN2 genes you have and all that stuff for weaker, stronger type 1s or, ty or type of SMA. And... Um, and I started receiving treatment about what three years ago. Yeah. And we've been told that she would never receive treatment or anything like that. But she did live to see the day. And yes, we do get some back. So when a, you know, can wiggle her toes. Can you wiggle your toe? So she was never able to really m make a lot of movement before. And now she can make some movements, and she can. She says yes or no with her uh, mouth. She says no with her eyes and yes with her mouth. And she also is very receptive, so her mind is completely there. And the, the big yeah. change from the treatment, it's not the same from every patient. And what we notice the most with Anna is when she gets a small bug, you know, discovery time is a lot faster than we used to. Yeah, um, there's a lot of differences we've, we've actually come to realize that we're not only facing, like, you know, treatment and like, yay, we got to this point, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of milestones that you have to overcome, but there's a lot of things that we've gone through as a family. So we've also had our son, Caleb, um, who would have been with us, but he's 11, would have been 11 at this time, but he had two different conditions, uh, hydrocephalus and Williams syndrome, which are the first known to be like the first combination together um, to be known uh, to have someone known to be have the combination of both the hydrocephalus and the Williams syndrome. Um, Williams syndrome, we knew absolutely nothing about. We kept trying to find a research on it. There was like no information, so we just kind of followed the doctors, and we didn't realize how serious the heart conditions can be. Um, he had a pulmonary stenosis. Yeah. And um, oh, and I, his hydrocephalus was quite serious, and. Um, yeah, he had quite. He had a lot of water in his ventricle, but his shunt was working really well. He was doing fairly well, um, although he did get vi uh, viral pneumonia, and unfortunately, we lost him on Father's Day in 2010 um, due to the viral pneumonia attacking his heart and his heart not being strong enough to survive that. So he was on an ECMO machine for four days, and then they said he was doing really well. He was being really receptive, really responsive. And um, it was, we put Enna in for respite at the hospital so that I would, you know, like we could run back and forth between both children and um, watch how to, you know, keep an eye on both kids. And then at nighttime, I would go sleep beside Enna on the cot. And at six in the morning, I believe, they woke me up. So to tell me that, you know, that he was declared brain dead. Um, so a lot of our story spiraled from there. We went into a lot of journeys from that point forward, a lot of life-changing events because we had to quickly take care of Anna and, you know, we have another, my son that was living with us at the time and really having to try to help him cope with what he was going through uh, from the loss of his brother to understanding that his sister had a terminal diagnosis and that we were proactive in her life and that we are not sure which side everything sways in life now, being proactive. So then we went through all of that. We went through so many scenarios, so many situations, right from the moment that we moved in. So when we met to the first time, Hugo asked me to order Chinese dinner, and I ordered a Chinese dinner, and oh my God, I rocked his bill. Like, not intentionally, you know, and everybody, <laughs> it was not an intentional thing. I, I did this order, he goes, picks it up at the restaurant, and he's like, holy crap, man, that was expensive Chinese food. And I'm like, oh, his bill was a little bit hefty, and I'm sorry, I apologize. For our first, like, home intake, you know, like, fast food take or whatever, supper or whatever, 
That was quite funny, but... And, yeah, and, you know, that YouTube channel will be... He's going to have some... Uh, really some serious conversation. He's going to have some funny uh, story we have to tell. He's going to have some... Really, serious. Uh, serious, emotional... It uh, can be controversy for some people because sometimes it's political. Yeah, yeah political. We yeah, have some uh, very serious confrontation between uh, the healthcare service and some healthcare worker. Not to mention ourselves in the mental health system. Um, myself had PTSD before, um, and I was diagnosed. So I had a lot of childhood trauma that I had to go through and climb through to overcome, um, to be able to get to a point where I am today. And it's not, that alone was just an insane story to live through and for the realization of my story to be viewed to today's world. It's it's sick that it's still happening. Uh, my mom was BLT addicted. My um, She's online romance scam now like brainwashed completely and my dad unfortunately was a heavy drinker but was pretty rational had pretty good wisdom he was a fair man at most part everybody always had high respect for him um at my you know i've got we've got like a short small family both hugo's parents are deceased uh his mom was gone when he was what 18. yeah my mom passed away from a very rare disease to the wasn't quite understanding at the beginning called sarcoidosis is basically chronic pain sacridosis yeah. and uh, my dad passed away by a heart attack i was two years old uh, no brother no sister i have a half sister to uh, you know the relationship never been there we have tried uh, lots of it it's my fault um, I, we all already have a lot of stuff to deal with here to the you know our personal space is very 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 limited limited here we have nursing staff we have people from the hospital PT, UT, oh can i just talk to you the nursing staff yeah so we do have nursing staff come at night time and i have to interrupt on this because it is kind of a funny topic i have had one of the funniest questions ever asked so. and it was by an lpn that worked for us once and she says with you having nursing staff here at night time how do you guys have your moments like your intimate moments and i was like oh well, you kind of have to get over the threshold barrier of being shy in your home. I mean, even right down to getting up in your pajamas to like, you know, literally having the worst hair day ever, your grumpy moment, your nurses see it like all, they see it all. I mean, other than you go running in his underwear again. Yeah, well, that have <laughs> happened. If you, if you forgot to have happened, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna find the stat monitor here. Uh, well, usually we used to have the oldest one here, but we have we keep that. It. <laughs> we have that stat monitor here. I'm gonna see if and I it have. Tells her heart rate if I have enough. Well, it's the oxygen level and her heart rate level on this. And we set up some limit on this, and when it go below those limits, it alarm off. And eventually we'll go through what we do with all her stuff, but it's a long learning process. And um, yes, do? one day that alarm off went, uh, went off for a little bit too long. I don't know if the nurse was on the basement in the bathroom because they have to go to the bathroom. And yes, I rushed down with uh, my underwear on, grabbed the bagger, started bagging Anna, and yeah. <laughs> and he's talking about running down in his underwear, so this is... Uh... What he's talking about when he grabs the bagger, he gives breaths into the trach, which Anna is trach vented, so it helps her with her breathing, but Anna gives her breaths when we need to give her extra support, um, which we'll explain a lot more later on. Yeah, and we have so many funny stories we're, we're going to be able to talk about, specifically with that bagger. So, <laughs> and anyway, I doesn't want to get to all those details tonight because our night nurse is going to show up soon, but uh yes we're gonna try to uh the goal is what the goal will be is that right to put a video a day or uh we're gonna work on doing uh work our videos a day or whatever uh we do suffer from you know like our ptsd or depressions and things like that so on top of everything plus about you know like a, what it was a year six months after my cancer when i finally had my second surgery so i had a full hysterectomy on top of that you know from my thyroid and then about six months after a rare yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not only that. COVID have hit. Yeah, uh, and then I had a rare I was brain working up for memory. You get hit by a brain, a severe brain bleed. One. It was a 
temporary break. Like and I go back to work to get hit again. Uh, I have to watch that everything on Skype with Dawson, tell them to call the ambulance. It's, which is uh, my only son. I get back on contact with my kid in Quebec. It was not easy. My daughter have a baby. After that, my daughter get pregnant again. She get COVID twice. She lose a baby. It just it's like, like our it's, life is it's, like it's, this impo- it's unbelievable. Then we're gonna the get events to, that yeah, yeah hold is just unbelievable from what we deal with every day or what we struggle through. So as you know, a lot of people will be like, oh yeah, right, you know, prove it or this or that. You know, we there's so much to be able to go over and say. Um, people call us, you know, we're peaceful because we are rational and we when we're angry there is something we're angry about and it, it usually what we're angry about has a ration behind it so people call us peaceful rage uh, so peaceful like so we can be peaceful and stuff anyways we're gonna start cutting it off and uh, let everybody know you know we yeah are... he's gonna have a lot interesting we have few dog we own a horse and we do some training with the horse for our own PTSD to have very good result on all of us oh uh, me, Lisa, we took Anna there one or twice. We're going to try to take her oh, more. Behind then uh, if you guys, there is Hope. Sure. That is Hope. This is the youngest one. Yeah. Uh, she's a been... reason why we have her name Hope. Is the yeah. One. She's the seventh <laughs> child we met on the 2nd of February. Uh, sorry, we met on February and the 27th of my birthday. Yeah. Anna is like sevens of everything. Anyways, our story will be long eventually through everything that we go through then yeah we invite you if you guys has been interesting to hear uh, a story it's not uh it's not a common story it's not well, something follow us on, yeah. yeah not just stories but our events our adventures um you know and obviously you know remember to hit the bell subscribe <laughs>